Hello, 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 and welcome to the show. This is Wrestling Wet Entertainment, bringing you the latest exclusive breaking news, previewing and reviewing the latest shows from WWE, AEW, New Japan, and everything in between. I am your host, James J., starring Coleco Yachts. What it do, world? Hope everybody, you know, hanging in there. It's getting some crazy time, but just hold on, man. B.O.P. Power positivity. And Mitch Mayhem, who is not here. And Scooter Dust, who is also not here, but he might be joining us a little bit later. Um, it's not a great day for wrestling. Um, obviously last week we were not on, uh, for many, many reasons. Um, but, uh, last week, uh, we lost, um, a a wrestler, uh, Hannah Kimura, uh, she was 22 years old, uh, for apparent cyberbullying suicide. This really sucks, right? I mean, it really sucks when it's something of suicide and and when mainstream media picks it up and and you know, and we all try to look at the deciding factors and so on and so forth. Uh, it didn't help with certain other people's comments, uh, Tammy Snitch, for example, uh, who made some not so happy, you know, comments about it. Uh, Sienna talked about it with her fans, and, and she was really, really distraught about oh, it. Okay, right? um, it. Yes, Sienna, a.k.a. Alice K. for those who don't know. Yeah. But, um, yeah, she seemed very distraught about it because she knew her – she didn't know her, know her, but she knew like of her mother type deal. So it it just and it rocked her hard, and it's just rocked everybody in wrestling hard. And it just goes to show, like, yeah, we're inside quarantine, and yeah, physical health, but just your spotlight on mental health and your mental well being, and and sometimes you gotta unplug, and especially during this time where. We're in this weird situation where we have to stay engaged to figure out what's going on and what's updating, but we need to plug away because the news that we are getting is so depressing and the way that people are interacting with each other is not of civility and it just, this hardcore balance that you have to try to try to present, not only for yourself, but but for your mental well-being, and it's just, you know, it's just a shame. It, it, it truly is a shame, and, you know, uh, rest in power for her, man, but if you guys need help, man, go get it, man. Talk to somebody. It's It doesn't, doesn't hurt to talk to anybody, man. That's why, you know, sometimes you always talk to people, man, because you never know, man. The smile and positivity that you give somebody could prevent them from doing the thing that they thought that they wanted to do. Absolutely. And, you know, um, um, uh, social media could be very toxic. And just like you said, um, in today's world, like right now, what's happening. Uh, and, you know, sometimes wrestling fans could be very unforgiving. You know what I mean? So, oh yeah, you know when you send out that tweet or put that message out, know know that it's going to an actual human being that might have feelings. That is so true because the one thing that I always tell people, even when I send text messages, the one thing you can't account for when you're sending it is is context. You can't account for tone and context Absolutely. so you know me, me telling you hey i'm on or hey let's go this way or hey hey what's up or it, you know if you it you, people take things people could take the one thing that you would think would be universal you know different ways and uh, I, I mean honestly yeah 
honestly, I would say it'd be best to just, you know, take yourself off of it sometimes because especially now with with this whole racism at play popping in and as much as people don't want to hear it, racism is, is following any everywhere, everybody at this point. And everybody's going to say, just stick to wrestling, stick to wrestling. But the problem is, it's so blended in now. It's blended in, in the NFL. It's blended in the M- NBA. It's blended hell, NFL this week with Drew Brees and what, what happened there. And the NFL admitting that they were wrong about the Kaepernick situation. So it's it's hard for this time and age to just be like, just stick to the wrestling or just stick to this, you know, and I'm not, we're not going to go deep into it or, you know, d- deep and diving, you know, no. getting into the nuances, but to say that we would, but to say just to ignore it would be naive on our part. Um, another unfortunate that this, uh, that happened this week. Um, Danny Havoc died. Um, he was 34 years old, so another young guy uh, died. The, the way of that uh, has not been determined yet. Uh, but this kind of sucks, too. It does. It, it does. I mean, a, another guy, Larry Dallas, he, he talked about Danny, and he knew of Danny. So it's funny when I look at, like, how these wrestlers react to it, because – you know, there, no one takes it, you know, so hard, you know, the worst than, you know, their peers. Uh, right. So that's who you should take, you know, with the grain of salt, not the people who try to pop off every now and then. So, but to me, you know, two extremely young r- wrestlers, you know, Born too soon. Two, two, two young lives. Hell, I'm 36. And to me, that's like Jesus, you know, yeah. like it's it's just like it 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 hurts to see people, you know, it 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 hurts to see people passing, even if it ain't people acting to you or or Absolutely. close to you. But loss of life should be, you know, never a binary choice. Yeah. Danny Havoc, of course, uh, the brother of Jimmy Havoc, and father to Jessica Havoc. Yep. Um, <sighs> some, uh, Two-time CZW uh, death tournament winner, if I remember correctly. Yep. So, some or good tournament news. of death, right. There you go. Good Come news. Uh, Drew Gulak has returned to WWE. How did he come back to WWE, Coleco? He gave Vince that PowerPoint presentation, baby. We're back. But it also shows you how you should conduct yourself in a business environment because that's the reason that they even brought him back in the first place. He didn't bitch about it. He didn't go on Twitter and release stupid videos a la the Revival. He took the Dusty Road, the well, not Dusty, Dustin, Dustin Rhodes approach. Yeah, Dustin Rhodes approach and just handled it civil, civilly. And the universe rewarded him. It just goes to show, like, you don't have to be, you know, a shitty businessman to get what you want. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and, and he's back, and it just shows you, like, as much as everyone keeps saying, you know, Vince, is, and, and this is to Mitch, as much as every guy, he, every time he says Vince is out of control, Vince only cares about himself, Vince doesn't care about the people. If people do things the right way, he will reward them. And, and, and that's one thing that you cannot deny about Vince. Whether you love him or whether you hate him, if they handle business correctly, he will do it in jest. And even if you don't do it the right way, you know, it's not like a dead a dead sentence. Um, you yeah. know, Bruno Sammartino, Ultimate Warrior, CM Punk. I mean, nobody thought that they were going to come back to WWE or have anything to do with it. And, you know, they came back. They always come back. I mean, because the one thing that heals all wounds is time. And 
Punk is it's a little bit more iffy because he's more Fox than than WWE. However, there has been like you know they're showing his videos from him when when in Money in the Bank and winning heavyweight title for the first time. So it it just goes to show you like it. it not every day is going to be a death sentence, you know. Time heals all wounds. Um, Vince is a caring guy. I mean, yeah, he cares about the business aspect, but for the most part, I mean, everyone who talks with Vince doesn't think he's an asshole by nature, maybe in a business sense, but not, you know, in a personal sense. Um, not saying he's perfect, by the way. Because I can hear, I can hear Mitch in there. You're just <laughs> sucking on his dick. You're just sucking on his dick. So. Yeah. Um, one thing I uh last week obviously we was not on. Uh, we did miss uh a big paid preview that happened. Uh, AEW Double or Nothing. Uh, could you maybe give us a brief um. A brief description of what you thought of the show as uh, in its entirety. Entirety. Um. It was good to me, not great to me. Um, mainly because a you had Mike Tyson, you had the if I remember this right, the main event was the TNT title match, if I'm not mistaken, correct? No, the main event was the... the it uh, was... The Stampede match. Oh, yeah. The, now, that was good. I, I must admit, that was good. And kudos to those dudes out there working a whole stadium. So, that was a great match. Um, Kushida got the belt. Hey, we called it. Uh, it was a great day <laughs> for the X chromosome. Yeah, bitch. So we're just like high fiving cats at that time, but overall, it, it was an okay show. I mean, was it worth fifty nine bucks? Is the bigger question. Absolutely. And to me, it it wasn't. You know what I mean? And right. that's where can you justify the value, especially when that pay per view was on the same night. I want to say. No, we did. No, that was two weeks ago. Never mind, because I was about to say, the UFC did a free show. And I was about to say, if it was on the night of the free show, people are going to lean toward the UFC. Um, but I think it was beforehand, so. Yep. But even even with that, it still wasn't worth 59 bucks. Hell. I mean, you could debate if WrestleMania is worth 60 bucks in today's world. You can. Um you can, but the problem but but the offsetting thing with that is is that if you have the network, it, you won't pay that sixty bucks. Exactly. I mean in essence you're paying in, in essence you're paying it over the year, but you're getting so much more from a value standpoint. And that's not including the the newly announced free tier. So for all Mofo who say they won't don't want to pay nine ninety nine. They got a free tier for your ass. You can't get no better than that. Just saying, you can't get better than free. Exactly. Um, that's a pretty cool thing that they're doing, right? And it's the first time that WWE has a current Monday night and Friday night SmackDown on the WWE Network as well. And they were hinting at this because of the simple fact uh, they, they sent surveys for, for fillers, you know. And I got one of the surveys because I've been a day one, A1 WWE Network guy because who the fuck wouldn't? Um, but in, in, they, in one of the questions were, you know, how would you feel if you had to uh, a, tier, a tier structure? Because uh, what they're trying to do is maybe you pay a little bit more, but you get like access to like tickets before they go on sale. Pre pre sale, they're trying to do like okay, you'll get a vote for the Hall of Fame 
those type yeah. of things. So they're trying to work work it out, and especially today, considering like hell, COVID, and most people are going to be inside anyway. And I think it also helped when they got that general response. Because if I remember right, they did set something free for a little bit during COVID. Yeah, they but did. Um, so so that just showed you, hey, the, the the prescriptions jumped, and rather than have them leave and resign, just say, hey, you're free, stay here, you ain't gotta do too much. Oh, uh, we kind of got off subject with the the WWE Network, but um. Just back to the AEW. Um, so, yeah. Just uh, for uh, a brief summary. Sheeta is your new women's champion. Uh, I Honestly, one of the only things I actually popped on during the whole night. Because I didn't expect it. I thought they were going to keep Nyla. Um, I kind of I figured it when they said no DQ. That, that, that threw me a ringer. Because... It, it it gave me the the red flag because of the simple fact that you already knew, like, going pound for pound. It gives uh, Shida an out. Right, right, it gave Nyla an out. But... And that, to me, I, I saw that part, and, you know, Dobby that's Allen... what I thought. Okay. I was right about Darby Allen. He wiped himself out in the first two minutes of his arrival in the Casino Battle Royal. Um, nearly broke his leg in half. Um, Cody is your new TNT champion. What do you think about that? Uh, that belt of his. Um, it's not finished, so I'm not gonna. I'm gonna reserve judgment until we see it as a finished product. Because everybody just find a way to shit on it, just to Absolutely. shit on it. And and to me, I'm like, okay, we know COVID, COVID has fucked up the whole supply chain. So ain't no sense of shitting on something that ain't even finished yet. If that was, if that was the finished product, would you be... Now, if, the, if that was it, I'm disappointed as fuck. <laughs> but but yeah. considering... Photos have been flying around about that that's not the finished product. Right. I give them the benefit of the doubt. What did you think about um, John Moxley defeating Brody Lee by TKO? I mean, Protecting I mean, Brody. Yeah. Protecting Brody Lee. Um, I mean, that's basically, basically what it was. I mean, I mean, what are your thoughts on uh, John Moxley's first um, paid preview defense being second to last on the card? That's kind of disappointing, right? Uh, it is. It 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 shades of me of CM Punk's reign, if you will. Um. How you know he was the champ, and yet he had to go on next to last at, at the pay per view. Um, AEW is gonna be like, Oh my god, it ain't the same. Blah, 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 blah. Bullshit, it's the same. I mean, there was certain shit in the pay per view that was literally the same as a, as a WWE show, so let's not, you know, I get mean, ourselves here. Most of the the wrestlers, <laughs> or, yeah. Or- Ninety-five. Exactly. So I mean, I'm pretty sure he doesn't care because he cares more about the freedom than what place he is on the card. And then at last, you have the stadium stampede. The elite with Matt Hardy beat uh, the the inner circle. Did you or did you not buy one of those Inner Circle Stadium Stampede shirts? Uh, the answer is no. And it's not because I don't want to. It's just because my money went to other things such as graduation <laughs> and paperwork shit and sinks and cars 
and Bills. <laughs> Fuck that shit. As as I as as I hypocrite myself, because I bought a Winged Eagle championship belt <laughs> for oh, a month sweet. ago. <laughs> Which one? The big eagle or the winged eagle? The winged eagle. I got the winged winged eagle warrior. The ultimate warrior one. Yeah. So the color of the strap of the color is yellow? You say what? The color of the strap is yellow because you saw the Oh, the blue one. The blue one. The blue one. Okay. Yeah, the blue joint. Not not the yellow one. I I know there was three. There's like a purple, the blue, and the yellow. And the white. There's a white one that's popping off all over the place too. So but yeah, the, uh, my belts are. I have uh, the big gold belt and I have the smoking skull. See, that's what we need to do. We need more positivity about belt and chair collections. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can't well, go wrong. I mean, the old designs were awesome. The ones now are kind of generic. You know what I mean? Yeah, but the but the new one ones just feel bigger. They're, the motherfuckers are huge. I mean, the only belt and, I would probably get from this generation of wrestling is maybe the new Intercontinental Championship. That is a that's a sweet ass belt. It is. I mean, it's the best belt WWE has right now. I'd sooner get the twenty four seven belt before I get the. The WWE belt. Yeah, I, I'm. I was thinking of getting because, well, my collection. Let's see what I got. I got the the. I just told you the Warrior Winged Eagle. Yeah. Uh, I have the Universal. I have the WWE Championship. Which one? I have uh the the new one. Okay. The heavyweight championship. So I got both of those: the Red Universal and the WWE Championship. Uh, I have the Intercontinental Championship because that was a, that one was a steal. The uh, the the version before the new one, and that was like one eighty nine at WWE. It was oh, fucking a steal. That's yeah. fucking that's a steal. <laughs> and then I have the uh, the NXT. I got the NXT Championship right before they debuted the new <laughs> NXT oh my Championship. God. And I was just like, <laughs> fuck. But when I got the belt, I had Nakamura. I had Nakamura sign it. I had Samoa Joe sign Damn. it. Neville signed it. Bo Dallas signed it. Bobby Roode signed it. So, yeah, I got, I got the people who won the belt to sign the belt, at least. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um... Last week on SmackDown, WWE did an angle where Jeff Hardy drunk drove right over Elias, and uh, Braun Strowman was present for this. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, it was all a storyline, and Jeff Hardy was not uh, mm-hmm. actually uh, uh, guilty. But don't you think this is maybe a little bit poor taste? <sighs> yeah, I mean, but but the mo- the best storylines are the ones that are off reality or based off reality. You know that when with the blurred line, and and you can't and people can't sit there and say, well, it was bad in taste. But yet they did a whole fucking storyline with Matt Hardy and Edge because you know Lita cheated on Matt Hardy. Sure. You, you you we can't have it both ways. The things that we let slide is off the chain. I mean, they have so to me, I worse things they, and worse taste. Exactly. So, and if he's okay with it, if if Jeff's okay with it, I'm okay with it. It's not. It's not my story to put out there. And last week, it was also announced that Matt Riddle will officially be a part of the SmackDown brand. Uh, it's been rumored that he's been he was going to be a part of. Uh, the WWE roster for quite some time now, uh, but it's official now. Matt Riddle on SmackDown. Your thoughts? 
What's going to happen with the NXT tag titles? Well, Imperium has them right now. And uh, I think those guys, uh, Sora and Riku, have uh, maybe an opportunity at it. And oh yeah, the, the what are they called? The, uh, the Fashion Police are your number one contenders. Oh yeah, that's right. So, I mean... Hell, I mean, Matt's coming up. I mean, like I said, the best ability right now is availability. <laughs> so, <laughs> you willing to come to work? You're on the roster, buddy. <laughs> so, like, that's pretty much it. Like, Austin Theory has to be the luckiest motherfucker ever. Because oh, he yeah. got signed and, and, and a month and a half later. Oh, yeah, you're on the roster. Well, fuck. Ain't got no choice but to swim now. But I've heard that they really love that guy. As much as like people gave him shit for the Montez Ford spy, <laughs> they, they they really they really want him to succeed. I mean, it was definitely prematurely he got on that roster, and he's by far, uh, by no means ready to be on the main roster. But it's you know who you got, not who you need. Exactly, and that's why I tell people it's like everybody's like, "Well, you know, Vince just doesn't care," and da da. It's like, bro, we here now. It's you know, it's 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 availability, and that's not even including what's happening in Florida because they're thinking. And I ran into an article where Florida's thinking about allowing crowds to go to these shows. So, you know. It, it, it's getting back to normal, whatever normal is now, because it can't be what it was. But hey, man, it's it's time to go. And Riddle's there, and he, he needs a, he needs a uh, he needs to move up too. I I think they were talking about uh, Do, uh was it Dominic Dijakovic? They said that he's gonna get called up soon. So basically, anyone in NXT that doesn't have a storyline. Yep. So, yeah, it's, it's just going to be, you know. I mean, that's good for, it, you know, the main could... roster because they're kind of getting stale right now with what they have. And the women's division, especially on SmackDown, desperately needs new talent. Um, that being said... Uh, you know, Matt Riddle would leave a big hole in NXT. Yes, that that is true. It would leave a hole in NXT for now. Um, but the one place where I think and NXT has a loyal base, so we know who their core is and the core structure. And to me, the core of NXT is right at this point, if I had to pick, uh, I say Undisputed Era, uh, Velveteen Dream, whether you like them or not, uh, Champa Gargano um, in Charlotte. Those are like, like they're the core group that they're trying to work with. And Keith Lee. So those are like the core, the main core that they're trying to stick with. And it's just try to get some of those guys that are that are on the come up to come on up and see whether they can uh make it or not. And uh Kurt Angle uh spoke about possibly managing Matt Riddle coming to the main roster but turning it down because he has a new um uh healthy food um business he's working on. Uh, would Kurt Angle work as Matt Riddle's manager, or would it maybe hold Matt Riddle a little bit back? Um, Matt Riddle is an ex cage fighter, so I see the 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 athletic portion there, the the sport the sport connect, you know, MMA, uh, Greco Roman freestyle wrestling. I see it there. Um. I, two totally different personalities. I, I mean, I could see it like a, um, how can I, like a Rick and Morty type of deal? Because <laughs> that, that's the only way I could see it work. 
not like the actual gimmick, but the way that they give and take from each other would be that way. Because Kurt Angle can be still enter- entertaining. Oh, yeah. and, and Matt Riddle, of course, you know, it's Matt Riddle. Who's going who's gonna to say no to bro? Well, Timothy, that show sure did. That cage match that they had on NXT was pretty brutal. Yeah, it was. And, I mean, if that if that's the way that he left going to SmackDown, then he left a lot better than most in NXT. <laughs> <laughs> um. Going back to going to some of the things that happened on Raw this week, uh, it would be remiss if we didn't talk about Nia Jax uh, not injuring, but maybe avoiding a, a cut on Kyrie Sane's face that could have definitely been avoided. It's rumored that uh, a lot of the women talent do not want to work with Nia, uh, Nia because... She hurts people. Your thoughts? Uh, I mean, I, I see people's points, shit, but but I'm also looking at it like shit happens, and everybody like is quick to like. Everybody's been quick. Oh my god, get rid of Naya because you know she is hurtful. And I'm like, you know she's part of, like, the big, one of the biggest dynasties in wrestling. (laughs) The biggest wrestling families ever. Uh, Not saying she's untouchable, but god damn it, it's close enough. And and someone of of her family stature is going to get a lot more you know, chances just because of what their family contributed. Is that fair? No. Um, But, I mean, hell, it happens. You know, we're not, uh, we're not uh, unfamiliar with, you know, big men in WWE that have been not you know, they haven't hurt people. You know, Bam Bam Bigelow. Uh, uh, can't really say. Vader's never really hurt anybody, but he was accused of being snug. Um, I mean, Seth Rollins is getting accused of it. So, I mean, it just, you know, er, right now, it, everybody's inside. Everybody's just finding a reason to nitpick. And, and yeah, it could have been avoided, of course. Didn't do I think Nia just went out? You know what? I just want to fuck this bitch up. No. So I mean, that's where you got to look at it, man. It's like look look at what happened and look at the intent. You think Nia needs more training? I mean, you got to think Nia. This is what Nia's not even like her second or third, like what fifth or sixth match back from a torn ACL. So two tor- two surgery, surgery on two knees. So she's still getting into the thick of finding her leg strength. You know what I mean? Like I- I'm not saying that that's the excuse that I would give her, but but it's not you know, the first time she's hurt somebody. With you know, not exactly knowing her own strength. Th- well, this is her first time trying to figure it out on coming back from two fucked up legs. I mean, the other ones I'm not going to excuse, but this one I would give her the benefit of the doubt. Because it's all about being comfortable in the ring. Like, think about it. You Do you think that she was... I mean, she was probably working to get herself back in shape from uh, as far as just walking and physical therapy. I mean wrestling in a ring and learning how to throw people is not like something that would be innately in her in her DNA, if you will. True, but you know, not, the, uh, not saying anything disparaging about Naya, but she is one of the bigger girls. And, you know, um, to make yourself, the other girls feel safe wrestling you, 
you gotta, you know, know how to manage your weight, or you're gonna hurt somebody. You know is that same, that I give you. You know, Maple was, you know, the main guy in '95, but you know, he hurt Diesel, he hurt Undertaker, he hurt half the roster, and it made them not go with him because of those facts. Mm-hmm. So you know that's what I'm I'm going with. If you're not, if people don't want to work with you, then it definitely stops you getting more money. And it's true. Um, another thing that happened on Monday Night Raw, our troop regained the twenty four seven. 7-Eleven I-95 CNN Championship by pinning uh, Rob Gronkowski and essentially small packaging him out of WWE forever. Your thoughts? Well, I mean, Rob's got to get back on the field, so <laughs> you knew that was going to happen. And the NFL already said they he ain't they ain't taking that celebration with the belt shit. So it's better sooner than later, so they can go back to Tampa Bay and not make the playoffs. <laughs> and uh, the street profits uh, took part took in another anything you could do, I could do better match against the Viking Raiders. Uh, Last week was uh, miniature golf. This week was bowling. What are your thoughts on this uh, anything you could do, I could do better events? A way to keep the storyline going without killing either side's credibility. I mean, that's basically what that seems like to me. I mean, they might as well just duke it out in a best of seven or something. I think they are. They're both at two and two right now. No, I'm talking about physically wrestling. Oh, yeah. But... yeah. I, think... I mean, they did that with Sheamus and Cesaro where it was like a a best of seven series or something where it turned into a tag team. But, you know, we're seeing things we've never seen before. We're... I find it entertaining. Maybe not everybody's going to say that it's it's good shit, but I think WWE's done demo shit that didn't work. I think this works. What are your thoughts? Uh, it'll work if they just stick with it. I mean, sometimes, like, they – I mean, they ain't got no choice but to work now because it ain't like the crowd can shit on it. So, <laughs> I mean, it ain't like there's a crowd that can boo the shit out of it. So, Hey, see where it goes. Try to make new stars. Try to try to create new content. Try to be outside the box. And I think this is one of those things where it's just like, hey, let's try to be out the box. And uh, one of the more bizarre things that happened this week was uh, it was announced that MVP was followed as a producer but rehired as a WWE talent. Kind of bizarre, but with WWE, you know, anything could, anything could happen in the World Wrestling Federation, pal, right? Yeah, I think that they were trying to get him to manage a, a black stable, but obviously with what the fuck's happening now, it's kind of a on that. <laughs> Touchy subject for the moment. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, let's not go there. Let's just figure some other lane to go to. <laughs> um, uh, Drake Maverick won the 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 cruiserweight champion. Uh, no, actually, Drake Maverick lost the cruiserweight tournament. Uh, to uh El Fantasmo and El Fantasma. I can't fucking get anybody's name right tonight. Um, he's your new cruiserweight champion. Drake Mavericks get a contract at the end of it. It would have been really fucking horrible if WWE didn't offer him a contract after this, right? 
<laughs> yes and no. Uh, yes, because the people were rooting for him and they kind of had him on his side. No, when you look at what the hell Leo Rush was saying because of the simple fact that, you know, you took people getting fired and, and making it into just some story gimmick. And, and there's a legit gripe to that because he's thinking, oh, well, since you did that with him, you're going to do, you're going to hire us all back. And, and, you know, you know, the world kind of hates Leo right now. Well, not everybody hates Leo. The world don't hate. I mean, people I've seen love him. But, I mean, he had a point, and he's gotten to the point where he released emails about his uh, him claiming that WWE was a hostile work environment. So this thing goes deeper than what most people think, and it's not just as black as white, black and white as Mark Henry or anyone else would put it for that matter. Right. Um, speaking of the other five wrestlers, WWE uh, reached out to all the fired wrestlers to ask them if they want to work at a reduced half their contract pay just to come back and wrestle. Uh, because apparently Impact Wrestling put out a commercial uh, showing some of the fired talent in it. And they didn't want them uh, getting to impact. And that's what we call putting the cart before the horse. Because if I, if that were any businessman, the first thing you do is ask them to take some whatever reduced rate. It's like the NBA is not going to sit there and go, oh, yeah, let's fire all the NBA players. Uh, no, we're going to be like, yo, can you take a little pay cut? We'll take a pay cut on our end, and we'll meet somewhere in the middle. No, nah, they just, like, they shot first and asked questions later rather than asking the questions and then shooting. Exactly. And, you know, that kind of goes to show you what kind of state they're in right now because, you know, everything that happened with Drew, Drew Gulak, is kind of, that's kind of evident on – What's going on? They like they he had an offer. They didn't want to do the offer he wanted, so they pulled the original offer. They let him get fired, and then they re-signed him. A lot of things that could have been avoided, and a lot of t- a lot of time uh, mis misplaced, right? When it comes to that Gulag situation, yes, I see that point. But it also showed a point where if you do it without, if you just keep the business as business between you and that person, then the trust is there, if that makes sense. Like, I think that's what, the Gulag situation to me is different than what they did with the other wrestlers. You know what I'm saying? Because the Gulag thing. What I'm trying to get out, it just shows how unorganized they are, they are right now. Oh, yeah, they're hella or- unorganized. Because, <laughs> hell, they don't even know what they're doing with their with their crew as far as uh, actual salary people. Like, they had them take a pay cut. So, I mean, they were just pay cutting everybody across the board. So, it just showed that they just cut their nose despite their face. And... The the havoc, and I get it because COVID kind of threw everybody's business pretty much in, in in a disarray. You know what I mean? And it's not like any revenue is going to make that up. So there's no revenue to make it up other than TV deals. But most of those wrestlers that get paid, they get paid off of house shows, and they're in the house gates. So that's where they didn't really articulate it right. That, uh, that being said, who do you think is going to come back? If anybody. Uh, if anybody? Well, I have yet to hear, well, Matt Cardona, a.k.a. Zack Ryder, ain't coming. Uh, Leo already said he's not coming. Deon- Perrazzo is already at Impact. Right. EC3, to me, is going to still be at Impact. Gallows and Anderson, yeah. They could come back because AJ is still there, but AJ only got a couple more years because he's on the retirement tour at this point. 
Um, it's hard to tell. It's rip- uh, Maverick for sure is back. So, I mean, it's hard to tell who's going to, like, come back and who's going to leave. I mean, you could kind of tell who's – you could give a – you could tell a, a, a lot of the other people, but there are some that are wild card. And, and, and late to the party, Mitch Mayhem. Hey, you know, I'm always late. You just don't call me late for dinner. Man, you, you just missed me talking shit about WWE. I made your day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck off. <laughs> I, I am against bad wrestling, not WWE. We're talking about in particular. The, we're talking about the wrestlers that were fired. Uh, which one of them might actually come back to that reduced rate that they uh, that WWE offered them? Yeah. Okay. So do you? That, yeah. Okay. Real quick, I just want to say that was really stupid. But no, I I'm joking. Real quick, I want to just want to say that was really stupid business by Drake Maverick to just sign that contract without reading it. Of course he fucked. It. <laughs> but anyway, well, you know, I was thinking the same thing, but you know, yeah, case, case hey, right? <laughs> you think fuck you, dude? Shit, you, think you put anything in that thing. I mean, he's using the emotional he, moment to capitalize. Yeah, I mean, he could tell Triple H, "Hey, I need a lawyer to look this off for." <laughs> yeah, I know. Really, like you, what do you expect him to do on, at that? Like, you know, <laughs> yeah, I need a little time. <laughs> fuck, that would have put him on the spot. But yeah, they, it was a little weird, but I'm glad he got his job back. I don't care if it seems exploitative. Of course it's exploitative, but he got his job back. Whatever. Do you think uh, any, uh, you've heard that uh, WWE offered all the fired wrestlers. Um, yeah, like one eighth, one eighth their fucking salaries. Yeah, if you don't have any ambition and you just want to collect a fucking paycheck, Kurt Hawkins, I'm talking to you. <laughs> Zack Ryder <laughs> no nah, Ryder I think Ryder has a mission now uh, no, no. I think it lit I think a lit fire in their yeah. ass no I think it I think it lit a fire in their ass you'll see Either but I think most of them people were I mean yeah you're right uh, real quick though yeah Zack Ryder and EC3 fuck no they're not going back for well, a reduced I rate say Zach, they have Zach they, real quick they have offers on the table from Impact I know for a fact well, if I'm Eric Young and EC3, I'm not going back to WWE. Oh, EC3, or not, excuse me, uh, Eric Young. Eric Young is Impact. What do you, of course he's going to Impact him. No, I mean, he's not going back to WWE. No, fuck no. Yeah. He's, he's probably already in, I, I, if I had to bet yeah. money, I would say they already signed him. I, I would say the people who make their inroads in Impact are not coming back. Uh, well, Eric Young. Or are going back. <laughs> No, I'm saying the people right. who make their inroads and impact are not going back to WWE. Oh yeah, uh, right. Sorry. So that I, I, I yeah, we could we could bet that one. Um, but the other ones who are loyalists, I would think Ryder would go back with his wife Candice Green. I, I would I would put money on that. But did um, you say I, his wife? Did you say his wife Candice LeRae? Oh no, Candice. Green. <laughs> yeah, Chelsea Green. Oh, Chelsea Green. <laughs> Chelsea Green. I'm, you know what? I was missing Candace Owens and Kate. Can- you know what? It's I'm good. over. I'm done. It's been a long time. It's all good. Week. It's long all week, yeah, bro. Long it, week, bro. Girls with blonde hair with uh, names that start with C. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. But, uh, nobody. Yeah. You knew what the hell I meant. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody I think that's definitely going to come back at the reduced rate, Mike Kyoto. I mean, that uh, I don't know about it. I, I don't know. I And I don't know enough about Mike Kyoto to know. I don't know if there's a market for older refs right now. I mean, he's been there for 30 fucking years. Yeah, but they wouldn't have let him go in the first place unless there was a reason besides just, I mean, yeah, to get rid of some money on the books. But was he vital to them? Obviously not. You know what I mean? I know who would come back at a reduced rate. The Brooklyn Brawler, baby. Not, not Kurt Ang. <laughs> Yo, fuck yeah. He's like, money? <laughs> oh, Virgil. Gennetti. Virgil would love that paycheck. Oh, definitely. Marty uh, Janetti. <laughs> so he could get a, uh, a cocaine check. <laughs> 
He blows all of his money on hookers and drugs. <laughs> anyway. Bro, have you seen his Facebook? It's <laughs> off the chain. Oh, he get dude, he gets hell on chicks. I know. Alright, it's know. uh it's time to start our uh, preview. We are wrestling with NXT takeover in your house. It takes place uh, tomorrow. Um, and one of the things I've heard of the rumor and innuendo is that they're going to have the in your house set uh, for this uh, show. That's pretty cool, Whoopty right? Whoopty freaking do. No, the rumor they're just is trying Mike Penn, to... The real rumor is Mike Pengale coming back. Oh, God, I thought you were going to say Mike Pence. So I was like, Pet what? <laughs> no, Pettingale. Yeah, I, I, I let I... me make sure I don't, you know, because it is crazy, right? right? Mike Pettingale, not Pence. There you go. All right. Uh, our first match... No, but real quick, I was trying to, I was trying to uh, answer you. Um, yeah. yeah. It's just repackaging nostalgia, honestly. It's like what these all, these, uh, Classic NES and classic SNES bundles you see popping up out of every... It's just trying to repackage nostalgia and sell it for a buck while they can. That's all it is. Oh, come on. It's, it's nostalgia. Oh, it's it fun. is! It is. It's nothing new. It's nothing innovative. It's repackaging old shit on new shit that has nothing to do with the old shit that makes it nostalgic. Anyway... Kind of like Chris Jericho and Mike Tyson reenacting the Austin Tyson yes, thing. Yes, they. I agree with you. That was cringe. It what that was obviously a copy of uh, uh, Austin and, and yeah, Austin and Tyson back in ninety seven. Right. Or ninety eight. Ninety eight. They're just trying to see. They're trying to sit at the at the wall and seeing what sticks. Nah, it just goes to show that there's nothing new under the sun. And everything comes. Well, from not not under this court, <laughs> not under this corporate son. No, they, uh, okay. I will say, I things might get better if Triple H takes over. He every now and then, yeah, I don't agree with him all the time, but every now and then he does show a shred of humanity, like with giving Greg Maverick a contract. Because if you realize, NXT signed him, not WWE. He he was released from WWE, and NXT picked him up, and that's Triple H. So. He does shreds of humanity and things that I'm like, okay, if you have, if you're in power and you you do things like that, okay, I, I'm cool with that. But every now and then he does that, and every now and then he you know shits on people. So, but not as much as Vince McMahon. <laughs> First match: uh, Mia Yim, Tegan Knox, and Shotzi Blackheart versus Candice LeRae, Dakota Kai, and. Raquel Gonzalez. Who wins the match, Mitch? Dakota Kai. Go? I'm thinking Blackheart because they did that little skit of her riding around in a fucking tank that was badass. Yeah, and a Dakota Kai tried tank. to hijack it. Yeah. Yeah, so I think she's going to get hers. I think shot. Well, she good. did. She came out of nowhere and fucking elbowed her. Like, it was funny because it was like a. It, 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 she flew it from from outside of the frame, and so he came out of nowhere and just decked her, and she went flying. It looked funny. And the only reason I say Shotzi because they got to build up new faces to face Charlotte, if that makes sense. I don't think. Uh, I don't know about Char Charlotte. Doesn't belong there, but I don't think Shotzi is going to get that shot yet. Um... Not not saying that she's going to get the shot, but they got to. You build know who I would like monster. to see? The, build, uh, can I tell you? Depth. I'll tell you right now. Dude. One, The woman I would start building up more than anyone right now. Me again. Um, you might yeah. I think she's money, dude. She's fucking money. Yeah, I would. Me is, me is good. Yeah. Me is fucking money, dude. Uh, next match, Finn Balor versus Damian Priest. This, uh, it was originally supposed to be Walter. Obviously, that didn't happen. Uh, personally, I think this could be the Dark Horse match of the, of the night. Who do you think's going to win, Mitch? Uh, I, can you repeat that? I didn't hear you say that. <laughs> it happens every time! 
Okay, Finn Balor and who? Damien Priest. Uh, Finn Balor, man. Fuck. Kalisto. Uh, Balor to keep the the Walter thing on on ice because Priest really is more suited with Keith Lee to me. But, mm-hmm. but that, I don't like them pigeonholing Keith Lee. He needs to be able to progress. They pigeonholed him with Donovan, Donovan Dijakovic for so long. He's going to get called up soon. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's crazy that they were calling him up before fucking Keith. But. The, best ab- ab- the best ability is availability. If he ain't got no storyline <laughs> or no title, come on up, bro. <laughs> yeah, you can get lost in the shuffle with the rest of them. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> like I mean, to be nine, quite like honest, the, like the Forgotten Sons. What the fuck the, have they done? Shit. But to be, I mean, the I'm Forgotten just saying. Sons. The Forgotten Sons. Besides, did, did besides racism. Yeah, it, I was just gonna say besides racism. <laughs> besides racism and KO burning him on Twitter for it. He called yeah, himself yeah. Soul Man because he had a dark okay. chest. Oh, stop! Oh. Stop! Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's fucking crazy, dude. Um, but on another note, KO, you invited to the bar. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Finn Balor, uh, for the win. We have uh, NXT North American Championship. Keith Lee versus Johnny Gargano. Who wins Coleco? Ooh, this is interesting because... Wait, yeah, say that again. Who wins Johnny Gargano? I'm sorry. Keith Lee versus Gargano. Oh, oh ooh, that's a good match. It, it, yeah, it's interesting because of the simple fact that Gargano already knows he's not going anywhere. So, uh, right, you know, you could see him winning it because he is the guy. But Keith Lee has been like this prevalent nah. champion, and uh, so I'm going to pick Keith Lee. We're gonna go with Keith Lee. Fuck it, Keith Lee. What about you, Mitch? Busk in his glory. Keith fucking Lee all the way, dude. I gotta go with Keith Lee, too. I don't think uh, Keith Lee should be the chaser. I think that's always been Johnny's uh, MO. You know what I mean? But I wouldn't be surprised. But the, the problem with that is is that Gargano was always the chaser as a face. Uh, a healed Gargano. Don't be surprised if LeRae pulls some bullshit and Gargano wins. But it's also TakeOver, and Johnny TakeOver doesn't have the best record. But the be- that's the best record as might a face, might as well not as call- a heel. Might as well just call him Johnny Putover. <laughs> <laughs> Putover. That's... I mean, he was a heel against Aleister Black at uh, a War Games, and he lost. That's one, though. Gar- well, that's uh, Alistair that, Black. And Alistair Black was pushed very high in it. Yeah, Alistair Black was the fucking guy. So, yeah. I mean, I could see. I'm not saying that Keith Lee is going to lose, but I could see it. Because I can see both, but I. Because I would they go don't have Keith a number Lee. one heel. Their number one heel is their coolest guy on their roster. But so they don't they have many faces. They really don't have many hate. faces. Yeah, they, they don't have don't. many faces. So, all right, don't. that's the. Yeah, that's where the balance is. But. And they're they're lo- losing one of the main uh, faces in Matt Riddle, so that's an even bigger hole. Yep. So, so you need Keith Lee there. Right. Uh, True. The next match: Tommaso Ciampa versus Karrion Cross with Scarlett. Who wins, Mitch? Uh, I, I, you gotta say, oh, Karrion, Karrion Cross with who? Uh, versus Tommaso Ciampa. Oh. Easily carrying cross, he's gonna he's gonna bulldoze for a while. He's the big, best thing going right now. I, I think he's the best new thing going. Coleco, watch us say carrying cross, and then he fucking loses with a roll up. If they do that, <laughs> I I'll be as mad as I was at WrestleMania 31, dude. I win Sting lost. I'll be that kind of mad. I'll be irate. Dude, you need to let things go. Fuck, I ain't letting that go. That should not have that. It should have been the other way. I went there to see Sting win. Everyone did, anyway. The, back to 2020. <laughs> um, Charlotte Flair versus Rhea Ripley versus EO Survive. Who wins? 
Kaliko. Uh, Charlotte's head and shoulders above everybody, so I can't. She, it's got to be Charlotte. Mitch? Uh, there's rumors of Io Shirai going to the main roster, so Charlotte. Hmm. You, you know, didn't hear about that? I, I did hear about that. But I it's re- made- it is pretty recent. <coughs> but, you know, I could have made the argument Io could have won this match. Um... That's what I'm saying. Well, well, no, because then they would need her in NXT more because that's the title. I mean, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that kind of puts no, no, because you, um, uh, that doesn't make that contradicts what's happening in the real world. So, uh, I, I don't see it happening. you know, Charlotte's been on every fucking show, and it's been because and they like it that way. Obviously, that's what I'm saying because it's just, and it's kind of in part. It's been the Charlotte having, fucking Flair show. Yeah, she's been to be quite honest, and and I get it because Becky left, I, so that's a big ass hole. Yeah, like, but, but okay, wait, 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 you just fucking said it. So put her on Raw or SmackDown. What the fuck are you doing with NXT with your biggest woman female star? What the fuck? I I get it. I mean, I get it. I get what you're. I get what everyone's saying. I just that's to ridiculous. me, but to me, I mean, she's just you know. She's head, she's head and shoulders above everybody, man. Well, oh, she it's, absolutely is. That's when it comes well, to the athletic, and, Becky, and to yeah. me, and to me, I think her wrestling people. She she's the person that elevates people, right? Because like, her last name's Flair, and all she's done so far, yeah, fuck yeah. yeah but I mean, yes, it's because she's a Flair, but it, it also. It is, but but also, she did a lot of work. Fucking good. She's done work. You know, she she's, dude. She puts work. I met her. I fucking I love Charlotte. Oh Flair. yeah. Oh yeah. She's a sweetheart. Charlotte's yeah, she's she's sweetheart. sweetheart. Yeah, she is. So everybody is going with Charlotte. Yep. Yeah. Right. And that takes us to our main event: the NXT Championship Backlot Brawl. Adam Cole, Bay Bay, versus Velveteen oh. Dream. Who wins? Real, real quick. Uh, real quick, have you been here? I think, I, okay, Adam Cole, but, and I don't think right now we need to put so much into those rumors of Adam Cole and AEW. That's for down the line when his contract expires in a few months. Yeah, but I mean, right now I think Adam August. Cole. So. Well, uh, no, it, well, yeah, that's two months. Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah, yeah, that, two months is not a lot of time in the wrestling world. You know, I shouldn't believe Britt Baker coming to WWE than Adam Cole going to AEW. No. Britt Baker already tried WWE and they, like, chewed her up and shit her out, dude. She only had, like, one match. And yeah, but uh, they, she wasn't being treated right and she went to AEW for a reason. I, I don't think they would give her up. What about there, she, before the injury, she was their main heel. Uh, female heel. She still kind of is the the main heel. But she's injured. She can't wrestle. Oh, yeah, but she's still doing shit. Yeah, Uh, but she can't wrestle. She can't be the champion. But... See what I'm saying? I could make... I can make the argument that makes her a better heel and more desirable. But but when my point was that they... You would likely put the female championship on her. Right. And you can't do that if she's injured. What about you, Kaliko? Who wins? Adam or Velveteen? Hmm. Adam just hit the 365 mark as champion. I don't I, I don't think anyone has ever hit the 365 mark. No, nope, he's the first. I say I say give him another month and then he'll drop it, but not now. But who would he Maybe drop two it? months. May, maybe in two months when it's That is that. the question, because Adam Cole is is it's pretty much NXT, like right. So if yeah. they can't re-sign him, they gotta they gotta throw the 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 money barrel at him. They they're trying to cut costs right now and take down everybody's pay. He's one person they can't do that to. Yeah, that's he's got true. leverage so over to them. Me, I, I would see these, and they hate the that. They fucking hate that when they have fucking... leverage. When you have 
when others have leverage over them, they fucking hate that, and they make you pay for it later down the line. So you better get a good check now while they can. I think I, I think you'll play fair. Uh, I would. Oh, it's hard because Velveteen got that shit on him. And that yeah, is, that's it, that. And that hasn't Adam been. Cole. Has that been? <laughs> Adam Cole. Hold real, has real quick though. Has has that been debunked? I don't know. I don't no? know. And that's I, weird I know. Everyone just got quiet on that. That's weird. Well, because America. You would think then, then you would think maybe, yeah, may, maybe there's shit we don't know that, you know, I don't know. You think maybe it would be acted on it because it was in the public eye. Like, if it happened, I'm sure the cops would have been involved, dude. Right. But I would have, yeah, I would have thought they pulled Velveteen. If that so that's got to tell you right there. I mean, so. Yeah. There's a lot of the factors going into this match. You know, Adam Cole has his contract coming up in two months. Uh, Velveteen Dream could be going to the main roster with... Um, mm, I think that's on hold. And, um, I, think that, I, think, I think circumstances have changed that. Uh, no, I just heard that recently. Uh, um, yeah, well, with this whole thing, I don't think that would be wise. I don't see Vince doing that right now. I, I see that changing that. Third of all, it's a movie match. Let's let's be frank. It's a part. Uh, it's a backlot brawl. It's a movie match. It's going to be pretty filmed much. like the Boneyard or the Funhouse match, um, or the what's his face, the Stadium joint. Right. And the Stadium Stampede. You, are you really going to switch the belt in the movie match? And, you know... Well, they're I mean, doing more cinematic experiences like the Money in the Bank, so, I mean... But it's never been for a belt yet. And it's ex- that Money in the Bank was the shot for the belt. I mean, yeah, but that's just precedent at this point. I mean, Pre- pretty much. It's precedent. And if not now, then when? Because that's the biggest yeah, right. question. Right. If, yeah, if yeah, Adam yeah. don't lose now, then when is he gonna lose? But that's just that I always see the w- roster. Sorry, I, we see, no, I no, always see I always see WWE like taking too long on that shit. Like someone like Adam Cole, they will wait until his contract comes out. Like you think now's the right time, but with the Velveteen Dream whole situation and everything. I think I don't see that happening right now, and I see them cutting it close to his contract day. I really do. Yeah, as like as try to try try to uh, have leverage to to resign him, kind of thing. Right, and and another thing is if Adam wins, who the fuck is going to be the challenger? Like this motherfucker ran through the whole roster. Keith Lee. So that means Keith Lee would have to lose to Gargano to even move up. Mm, right. Why? 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 To lose. If he wins, then maybe he becomes some one contender. I mean, the same way Lee, the same way Cena lost the U.S. title to get the heavyweight title. I don't think Keith Lee has to lose. I think he can win and still face him. No, I think it would be well. Well, I think his loss would be a shady loss, and then he would go for the title. I mean, it could go to Ciampa or Kerrion. If if we're going two months in advance, Kerrion could be available to, to take that role. Yeah, but you don't put a bell on him too soon. He's the monster in town, dude. You, you right. brought close to that get, bitch. Yeah, and him beating Ciampa, because the thing is, if Karrion Cross is going to get the belt, that means Adam Cole would have to lose the belt. So he would and, have to lose the belt to somebody who is a but, face that but, is not that strong. Does that make sense? But I could also right, make I hear you think. But Cole let, could be a turn face very easily. People love him anyway. But that would cause, like, the Undisputed Era to break up. Like, that's the only way that would happen. But you got to also think long-term, you know, with the Karen Cross thing going forward. So, I don't know that. Yeah, it's fucking confusing. <laughs> <laughs> Just know that. It's fucking yeah. confusing. So, maybe, uh, you know, next week when all of this is decided, uh, we'll have a little bit more clarity, and maybe we could Point ourselves in the correct direction. Yes, and and that would be helpful. But 
now nowadays I'm disappointed because right around now is when the G one bracket would pop off, and God damn yeah, it, yeah, that does suck. <laughs> and the playoffs would have been now, and, and the playoffs, it'd be a playoffs would be pop, and yeah, that G one like we would be like if the right around now is when the G one bracket would pop off, and I wouldn't yeah. even care about it. nothing else yeah. except the motherfucking G one. Right, and you know, uh, speaking of the G one, uh, um. On the ninth, New Japan is doing a press conference, uh, uh, talking about how they're going to resume production. So maybe nice. we, we oh. might be getting the G1. So uh, I don't see that. I'm sorry, but I just, it'll be the most modified. You know what? And and it, it's going to be like less than half a stadium. Not even half a stadium. It's going to be like fuck, like a. Less than a quarter of the stadium, and then it's going to be spread out, and you're going to have visors every fucking six feet. But, but I think that that would give them the most. It's going to be hard way. to put people in that, but yeah. I, I think it'd be the most innovative way to come up with the G1 because everybody gets tired of the same motherfuckers in it every year. Right. And then you, uh, so. and AEW said that they, they're going to maybe resume um, their shows in uh, November. So hey, Dev, when you, oh you mean live shows? Yeah. So it they're already doing sooner. tape shows. Yeah. It might be sooner because based on Florida, they're talking about de- allowing it. It depends shit. on the state, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. But Orlando seems to be like the hot spot. California those... and Florida are both getting better. Well, Orlando is getting because the NBA just came back and they're gonna do like a whole did it come back? Eight. Wait, what? Yeah. yeah, you didn't know that. So what no. they're gonna do? So the NBA is going to do. A, I gotta hear this. Uh, yeah, they're gonna play. Please. They're gonna play eight games, and then they're gonna have like a twenty-two team. Twenty-two teams play like within each other, and then play for the playoffs. So it's wait gonna a second. Go so wait, 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 wait. Okay, let me ask this: Is the prior standings are are the, do they matter? Yes, they matter. Uh, the only thing that's different is is that they're gonna those, add eight more games onto that, or what? No, all each team is gonna. Everybody's gonna play eight games apiece because they want those last couple of every teams team. Are, not every team, only twenty-two teams. So the eight 22. teams. That, so the only that, the teams that were eliminated from the playoffs so, are gonna yeah. are are not going. Oh, so the okay. only I'll teams that are gonna be there are the teams that can play to get themselves in the playoffs or are already in the playoffs. Oh, so yeah, then I'll they're gonna do later. that, yeah. and then they're gonna do the whole playoff format. Um, Major well, League Soccer is going to do Glenn their season at at Orlando at the at Wide World, uh, the, the Wide but, World of Sports. So but, to me, Orlando seems to be the the state that's kind of pushing everything to get people to get fans back in the stands. Real quick though, who who the fuck watches so- Major League Soccer? And I used to play soccer as a kid. <laughs> Trust me, at, at this point, motherfuckers will watch anything. Hey, when I was playing, no and, one liked uh, it. So, we'll continue those uh, those topics on wrestling with basketball and wrestling with yeah, soccer. Wrestling with basketball. <laughs> <laughs> but I, the whole reason I brought that all up is because of the fact that to me, if they're doing all that already and the state is okaying it. I wouldn't see them allowing like twenty five percent capacity arenas for no, I don't think wrestling. Anything, for wrestling. I don't think, for right, wrestling. I get what you're saying. For any other sport, but for wrestling, I don't see that happening below twenty percent of, of the the arena population. They'll take it. Twenty percent. Fucking eight. I don't see anything less than twenty it. or anything oh, above twenty. It. They'll take um, twenty. That will conclude our coverage of NXT um, TakeOver in your house. Uh, well, next week we'll have all the fallout from NXT. Uh, we'll be reviewing that entire show. Plus uh, our, a preview of WWE Backlash, the greatest wrestling match ever. Your excuse? <laughs> no, I meant like that's a dud. <laughs> until until then, if you like the soap, please like, subscribe, and comment both on YouTube <laughs> and Castbox. And if you want to join the conversation on Twitter, you can find me at James J nine nine three. 
Where can they find Coleco, y'all? I am Coleco, and I am in 96. Hogan joins the NWO, baby. Whoo, it's been a fucking long. <laughs> it's been a fucking long. <laughs> Watching WWE on the network, boy, it's the longest fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and what can they find Mitch Mayhem if Mitch Mayhem tweeted? In a van down by the river. No, uh, <laughs> you can find me. You know how you spend your your free time, Mitch. <laughs> That's a Chris Farley line. Shut up. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, you can find me at Mitch Mayhem X on Twitter. For Coleco Yachts and Mitch Mayhem, I am James J, and this has been Wrestling With... Entertainment. Yeah, fuck off, Doc. Lot of mercy. <laughs>